Although you can get fattened up on either one, just in different <laughs> ways. Amen. Well, uh, you know, this season that we're in right now, it's, it's really topsy-turvy crazy. I mean, it's unlike anything that we've experienced in our lifetime. And 911 was also a very mm-hmm. tumultuous season for our nation, but this one's just uh, been a different kind on a different level. In addition to all the other uh, tumultuous activities that are going on across the country and in the cities, and you you know this feel you watch the news and the serious issues i'm not minimizing that but so it's easy to get all tied up in knots right now and so tonight we're going to have a little fun we're going to talk about three knots that god can untie yeah so if you're all tied up in knots about something more than likely one of these knots is going to touch on what's touching you so we're going to share with you three knots that God can untie. And the cake just keeps on rolling there. <laughs> Custard, strawberry-filled cake with whipped yeah. topping, Come on, icing. I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to get in the Bible. <laughs> One more. Was, uh, somebody else told me. <laughs> lead me, Lord, Sherry. lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from chocolate. I've been said coconut cake. We want to just acknowledge all of your... Uh, favorite desserts. Yes. We're going to have to go on now, but we might talk about them at the end tonight. <laughs> Three knots that God can untie. untie. Ready? Here's Ready. the first one. The first one is fret knot. Yes, that's actually particularly in the King James Version. In Psalm 37, verse 1, listen to this. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither at the green herb. Fret not. And I'll tell you why you don't need to fret. Because God loves you. And I love, we're talking about the love of God, John 13, uh, we're, we're before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour was coming, that he should depart out of this world into the Father. Just think about the pressure on him mm-hmm. in those last hours, you know, headed toward the cross. Having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them until the end. I mean, here he is facing this head on, what's coming at him, and he's focusing on his love for others. His love for us. Yes, and I'm going to tell you, he he loves you too, believer. So fret not. And really, the idea of fret, if you look at the word, New Testament terminology, be anxious for nothing, or or don't worry, Jesus taught in Matthew 6. And and we just want to say to you, don't, in this season, um, don't worry. You know, God's got this. He really does. It's, it's going to be all right. Number one, worry doesn't help. Um, it's like I, I think I may have I mentioned recently that church billboard, you know, don't let worry kill you, kill you let the church help. <laughs> this can be misunderstood, but uh, worry can kill you. I mean, it can uh, physiologically, it can negatively impact, impact you mm-hmm. emotionally, psychologically. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, because it steals your peace. And peace is one of our weapons, weapons of our warfare, fruit of the Spirit. So, and John down there in Florida, one of our dear friends, saying God is good all the time. And that's that's so true. That's the reason yeah. we cannot. That's John friend. Richardson. Yeah. No. Oh, is it? I'm oh, yeah. sorry. Okay, yeah. I thought it said yeah, John Yeah, we have a Rollerson. friend, John Rollerson, in Jack- Well, hey, Jackson. John Richardson. Yeah. <laughs> you might um, not be in Florida. <laughs> one way to look at this is it is. What are you projecting on other people? You know, if you're all bent out of shape and anxious, are you adding to other people's worries? Are are you in a place with the Lord in this season where you're bringing peace into into situations? And that's what Jesus did. Uh, He changed the atmosphere. Yeah, shifted the atmosphere. He could release peace because he possessed peace. You release what you possess, if, uh, or what possesses you, if you, if you will. Worries and anxiety can get a hold of us. We tend to project that. We release it. We, uh, it can become a venomous projectile that we, sh- mm. we hurl toward other people. Mm. And the Bible's so clear about uh, not allowing uh, anxiety to get you bent out of shape. Peter says in First, First Peter five seven, he says, casting all your cares. That word cares. Uh, talks about anxieties, things that pull call, you apart. Yeah, pull you apart at the seams, the things that upset you. Uh, again, that cause you to fret. Uh, fretting, you almost just, you know, where you can work yourself up with anxiety. Fret not. Um, 
uh, he says, casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And that word cast is like throwing an anchor out of a boat. That anchor goes down and finds a solid place and holds on and steadies the boat in the storm. And that's that's what we do. We cast our cares upon Jesus. He, Our anchor of hope is in him and he'll steady us in the storm. So that's the first knot that God can untie. Uh, he's just so much more of handling any situation we face than we are in and of ourselves. So when it's more than you can handle, remember it's not more than he can handle. He, he is, he's got it. God's got this. This season is going to shift. Jesus talked about the end times and all the turbulent things that are going to uh, pre, uh, precede that, the famines, earthquakes, pestilence, all these kind of things. And he said, these things must come to pass. So the good news of that is they will come to pass. They will pass us. And this season will pass. And as you've heard me, we, we try to come back and drill this point home. How we are responding in this season is going to make us stronger so that when this season is over, uh, we're more battle ready than we before. You know, going through a battle and winning a battle makes you battle tested and, and, and more capable in the next battle you face. So uh, we're going to come out of this stronger, not weaker. And uh, let's believe that together. Fret not. God loves you. He's got this. What's the next knot we want to talk about? Now, next knot is faint knot. Yes. Uh, Psalm 139, 9. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. So faint not because he holds you. He is holding you no matter where you are. Yeah, that's a pretty graphic picture there, the uttermost parts of the sea. Uh, you know, you, uh, sometimes they have these shows about uh, treacherous situations people have survived. And mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the most frightening things, I saw a poll on this one time, but one of the most frightening things is like to be lost at sea, just to drift at sea and not knowing direction how to navigate or, or any way to navigate. You know, that, that you can imagine how fearful and frightening that would be and you just want to give up and that's the idea of faint not and you know Psalm 27 I preached on this last Sunday and I'll remind those of you who heard the message David said I would have fainted had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living mm -hmm. uh, so what you believe really matters when you're when you're when you're uh, when you're tempted to give up the idea of faint not is don't give up and I'll say to you in this season we're in right now uh, don't give up. Uh, yes, it is a battle, but we're going to win because uh, we're, we're in union with the winner, the ultimate winner, the victor, Jehovah Nissi, the banner, victor. Uh, so uh, I, we just encourage you, don't faint. Uh, don't think God's got this. He's going to hold you. Mm -hmm. Again, we see these things. God loves you. Here, God holds you. So don't uh don't give up. I mean, if someone came to you and said, you know, I just want to throw in a towel, just want to give up, well, I would what would your word of encouragement be? Well, I think I would remind them about God's faithfulness because that's one of the ways that we uh, encourage ourselves and remind them what the Word says. God is for them, not against them. He has a good plan, and he's, yeah. he's not meeting in emergency session, as we say, but he is on the throne. He's not surprised by this season, and he will be victorious in this season. And just, uh, you know, sometimes we just need to look beyond where we are because sometimes we're just too focused on the here and now. We can become discouraged, but reading the stories of the Word where God always had a plan where you know he brought redemption he brought restoration he brought hope and Great healing through, yeah. and uh, when we look at that and we know more about who god is and what he's going to do in the here and now for us yeah, when the devil's planning a breakdown for you, remember God's got a breakthrough plan for you. Mm -hmm. And keep your eyes on Him. And I like this uh, verse that you just read about uh, about God holding you. Uh, he said, Thy hand shall lead me, thy right hand shall hold, hold me. me. Can you, uh, if you're in a time right now when you're discouraged and you're tempted to faint, just give up, throw in the towel, could you just imagine God's hand is surrounding you and holding you and what that would mean. 
mm. what God's hand represents, how powerful his hand is. Can you can you think of anyone that you would trust more to put your life in their hand than God's hand? And David's declaring here in this, you know, where the, in Psalm 139, it covers a lot of territory, you know, where you can flee from the spirit. And, but this idea of being out in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, mm. God's hand is around my life, his strong right hand, and holding me. He shall hold me. And Jesus talked about no man can snatch his sheep out of his hand. He said, the father that gave them me is greater than all. No, no one can snatch them out of my father's hand. That's that double divine grip. Mm -hmm. Jesus' hand and father's hand, he's holding you. And sometimes we sing this, I hold to his unchanging hand. That's good. That's faith. You know, but the assurance comes from knowing that God's hand's holding you. That's right. Amen. That's right. So fret not. Don't worry. Uh, God loves you. He's got this. Faith not. Don't give up. God's holding you in his hand. Believe that, friend. And the last knot he's going to untie? Fear not. This is a really good one. Fear not. He keeps you, Psalm 121. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forever evermore so fear not because he keeps you yes and uh, we chose this passage because of the numerous times this scripture uh, speaks of the keeping power of God he keeps you he who keeps Israel he is your keeper and then this last verse that she said that he will uh, preserve you preserve your going out and coming in the whole idea of uh, again we, we're seeing God's love God's hand and and now this idea, he's keeping you. And there are so many scriptures that could be read about fear. Do you know that, and I've read this in multiple places, there are 365 references in the scripture where God tells us not to be afraid. Fear not, don't be afraid. You add them all up, they say there's 365. If you will, one for every day of the year. Fear is our nemesis. And I read a, I read of one uh, psychologist that had done a lot of work on people who became ill and were having different kinds of issues and said that 90% of the time there was some type of fear underneath as a root that was working to create their difficulties. Fear is, a, is one of the big boys that we have to battle in life. And fear causes torment. God's perfect love casts out all fear. But fear can uh, cause us to have uh, a physical breakdown in our body. It can cause us to have mental breakdown in our mind. It can cause us to have emotional breakdown in our soul. And so uh, there's all kinds of phobias and fears. that, And there's a lot of fear right now in this time. Um, uh, I, I, I think in some ways it's been, uh, you know, has been very magnified, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be wise and cautious and aware that some people are really hurting and suffering right now. We do not negate nor minimize that. But regardless, I, I would just, I'm just saying, regardless of the severity level of what's going on right now, um, we don't need to bow underneath the fear that causes our, us to start having the mental, physical, and emotional uh, negative stuff going on that gets, gets our heart and mind in the wrong place. We start losing our peace. Right. And we start believing uh, in the bad things that are going to happen right. instead of the good things that God says will happen. Right. And I, I love that scripture that talks about... Uh, you know, how God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And so we see in that when fear is uh, dominating, then we don't have power. We, we're we not focused on love, but we're focused on fear. And we don't have soundness of mind. And it's very important that we guard our peace and not let fear dominate. Yes. And uh, there's a lot of fear right now in the atmosphere. Yeah. 
a lot of fear on social media. Yeah, and, and a good word to think about is our need to encourage one another because encourage means to put courage in. Mm-hmm. And courage is, uh, courage is what's needed in the face of fear. And obviously, we're talking about the kind of fear that begins to paralyze you and shut down your life and keep you from doing the things you need to do keeps you from believing what you need to believe and keeps you from thinking the way you need to think so that you can stay alignment in alignment with God and navigate battle, war, and walk wisely through this season. Mm-hmm. So again, it's about it's kind of a game of one-upmanship. The enemy uh, wants to stir these things up so he has one up on us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, we're, we're, we're the head, not the tail. He wants us to make this the tail. Tails for all the... Not the good stuff happens. <laughs> We're the head, not the tail. We want right. courage. When the Holy Spirit came to the early church, what happened then? They became bold. They were wow. infused with courage to d- do what God had called them to do. So I just encourage you to be courageous and fear not. I'm not saying don't have a, a don't have uh, wisdom wisdom or appropriate uh, caution. And there, there, I guess one way to say it, there's a good kind of fear and a bad kind of fear. Uh, and we're talking about the negative fear that, that really shuts you down and paralyzes you. In other words, it can be a good fear not to put your hand on the hot stove. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's just good common sense. You need to be afraid respect, of hot eye. That you yes. respect yes. that yes. power and that you don't want to get burned. Yes. That's right. But the negative kind of fear uh, torments us. Yeah. But think about the people who are having uh, to be courageous, like these doctors and nurses mm-hmm. that are uh, all the time, not just when COVID-19 is uh, in, in a hospital, mm-hmm. but uh, infectious disease and everything. They had to work around that and with that. And uh, God graces them and gives them courage. And firemen and policemen, to, mm-hmm. you know, when everybody else is running out, they're running in. It takes courage. It does. And uh, I respect that and appreciate that and I'm thankful for courageous people and how they bless and help our lives in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. So, fret not. <laughs> fret <Thank> not. <laughs> and fear not. Those are three knots that God can untie for us. Don't worry. So I was thinking of a scripture, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. (laughs) That's where my brain was. Don't worry. Don't give up. And don't be afraid. Amen. Yeah. God loves you. God holds you. And God keeps you. Those, these are just simple things that we wanted to share with you on this lovely Friday evening as we prepare to have communion together. And we sure do appreciate you dropping by and spending this time with us. And there will be others who will view it later and others still that will watch it on our YouTube channel at gracehouse.tv. But uh, we don't take that for granted. We are blessed to see you joining with us. And we pray that this is a blessing to you. And now it's come to that time that we want to honor our Lord and uh, have communion together. So I hope you have your your bread and your cup. And um, Holy Spirit, just superintend this time. We just acknowledge your presence with us. Father, we acknowledge your goodness. We're so grateful to you. And we just focus our hearts, our minds, our faith, and our thoughts. On, on the Lord Jesus now. Lord Jesus, thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Would you take the bread? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for giving your sinless, spotless body as a sacrifice for us. For taking our sins into your body, paying the price for them, Lord, and redeeming us to yourself. Lord, thank you that by your stripes we are healed. Lord, that there is uh, so much power in the sacrifice of your body that you gave to be broken for us. And we take this bread in remembrance of your body broken for us and take the bread. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Would you take a cup? Yes. 
Lord Jesus, thank you for shedding your blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for enduring the horrific scourging as they put you through. And thank you, Lord, that you walked the distance to the cross and you hung on that cross and you you did it so that we could be reconciled to God the Father. We are so grateful for the power of your shed blood. Yes. Lord, how we treasure being in union with you now through your spirit by your blood. We honor you tonight and we worship you, Jesus. Your name is the name above every name. We confess that you are our Lord. We believe in our heart that God raised you from the dead. We have called upon you, Lord, to save us. And thank you by that one perfect offering you've perfected forever those who are sanctified. Thank you that you have sanctified us yes. through your blood. And we worship you tonight and we honor you, Jesus. Yes. Let's drink the cup in honor of our Lord. Oh, the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. Never loses its power. Nope. Sure doesn't. Amazing, amazing. Honored in heaven throughout eternity. The blood of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Well... Thanks for being on here tonight, yeah. and we'll be back on Sunday morning at 10.30. Um, yeah, online um, service. Online and, service. And 8.30 a.m. for those in the area that uh, worship with us at Grace House, we'll be having an outdoor service. Bring your umbrellas. Um, that's helping shade. people when the sun pops out from the clouds. You, you can create this little man-made shade there, but it works. Mm -hmm. And um, we will have our outdoor service, and we are looking forward to that. And we sure do appreciate each of you. God bless you. Anything else? Have a wonderful night. We love you.